Today on Passion for Food, I'll give you the lowdown on three different ways to make crispy, low-carb fried chicken. And we'll be using three completely different coatings to see which one has the best crunch and the best flavor. And one was so good it was really paltry in motion. And to get started, we need to prepare our three different coatings. I like one of these little coffee grinders for this. And first up, I'm going to be making some almond flour, just out of some sliced almonds I happen to have. And really, any kind of nut would work here. I think if I was going to try this again, I would probably try it with peanuts. I don't really like almonds all that much, but uh, maybe you do. And you can see the consistency we're looking for. We want a nice fine grind on this, but uh, be careful. Don't process it too much. You can easily turn that into almond butter, which would be good, but that's not what we're looking for here. If you don't have one of these little grinders or you want to make a bigger batch, a food processor is a great option here. And next up is one that might be a little surprising, pork rinds. Now, I know the idea of covering something in fried pork skin and then frying it again might seem a little weird, but hey, let's just roll with it and see what happens. I've actually heard repeatedly that it works really well, but I've never tried it before, so this will be a fun experiment for everybody. And we just want to process that until it's just a nice crumbly mixture like this. And if you don't have any kind of grinder or food processor, the pork rinds are actually extremely easy to break up just with a bag and a glass. And finally, we're going to be using some coconut flour. I had this already in flour form, but if you just had shredded, unsweetened coconut, you could easily grind that into coconut flour. Now, I know the coconut flour is not zero carb, but per two tablespoons, it'll have two net grams of carbs versus 12 net grams in flour. Now, before we actually start to coat our chicken, we do want to start heating up some oil. I'm just going to be using a Dutch oven here today. But a wok or whatever pot you have will work just fine for this. So we'll just let that warm up over medium heat and we'll keep abreast of the situation while we get ready to prepare our chicken breast. You can use whatever chicken you would like, but I'm going to be using some white meat here today. And we're going to cut this into three pieces. And you can see there will always be a nice dividing line on a chicken breast like this that separates two main muscle groups. So we'll just go ahead and slice along that, and then we'll slice the larger half in half again, and we should wind up with three more or less even pieces. So let's grab our three different breadings and get ready to make this crispy, low-carb fried chicken. I know firsthand how difficult it can be coming up with interesting keto dinner recipe ideas. So hopefully at least one of these different low-carb breading ideas will inspire you to give it a try. Now, one of the most important tips with fried chicken is actually to season the chicken, not the dredges. We want to season the chicken liberally with salt and pepper before we dredge it. That way the seasoning is directly in contact with the chicken under the dredge. And then after we fry, we can go ahead and just season with salt. I know I'm flying in the face of just about every fried chicken recipe out there saying that, but you just waste so much spice dumping it into your dredge and not much of that spice actually winds up coming into contact with your meat. Hopefully that doesn't ruffle too many feathers. Anyway, let's go ahead and get ready to actually coat this chicken. And I like to use an egg, uh, egg, an egg, an egg wash. Had to actually get things to stick to the chicken. So let's just beat this egg until it's nice and smooth. And then we can go ahead and coat our chicken. You want to go first into the beaten egg and then into your dredge mixture. And it does help if you try and have one wet hand and one dry hand. Otherwise you risk developing the dreaded condition known only as club hand. That's where you're just collecting layers of egg and dredge on your hands. And that's just not the fun kind of clubbing. Anyway, we've gotten our first one nicely coated in our almond flour. You basically want to get as much of the dredge on the chicken as will stick on the chicken. And we're just going to repeat that exact same process with the pork rinds. Don't worry if it still feels weird that I'm coating something in pork rinds. It still feels weird to me too. 
But hey, that's okay. I'm not too chicken to give it a try. And last up is our coconut flower. Now, don't ask me why, but this just seemed so flower-like. I decided to do the more traditional double dip method, where we first go in and get a light coating of the flower, and then we're going to go into the egg. Typically, that's supposed to help a little more of the breading stick on and give you a slightly crispier final product. So we'll see if that works for us here. And then we head back into the dry dredge. And we just want to coat this in as much of this coconut flour as will stick to it. And that's it. Our three versions of crispy low-carb fried chicken are ready to hit the oil. But before it does, if possible, it's very useful to be able to check this oil's temperature. I like an instant read meat thermometer for this job. We are looking for at least 325 degrees. And if you don't have one of these meat thermometers, you can just dip the corner of one of the pieces of chicken into the oil. If it starts bubbling vigorously, the oil should be hot enough. So in we go with our low-carb fried chicken. We want to lay them in nice and gently. Don't splash yourself. All three of these coatings are also gluten-free, by the way. I feel like maybe I should have mentioned that. I know gluten can be a bit of a stretch for some people. Anyway, we're just going to let our chicken fry here for about two or three minutes. And then I actually like giving it a quick flip with a fork. The reason being, even though these are immersed in the hot oil, it's still a relatively shallow pan with a lot of heat coming up from below. So they're going to tend to get browner on that lower side. And if possible, this would also be a good time for us to check the temperature of this oil again and adjust the heat as necessary. And we'll just continue frying another two or three minutes until we develop a nice golden brown color. At which point we can pull these out to drain on a paper towel and get ready to try three different kinds of crispy low-carb fried chicken. Starting on the left there, you have the coconut flour and the pork rinds in the middle and our almond flour on the end. So let's give these a try, starting on the right with our almond flour. Because of our egg, that crust is nicely stuck on there and it has a great texture. But I'll be completely honest, I wasn't 100% sold on the flavor. Kind of tastes like almonds, man. Not a fan. So as I was saying earlier, if I was going to do that again, I would probably use uh, roasted peanuts instead. And next up is the one that probably has us all a little scared, the pork rinds. I was as skeptical as anybody, but let me tell you, if covering something in fried pork skins and then frying it again is wrong, I don't want to be right. Because out of our three crispy, low-carb fried chicken contenders, the pork rinds are just a home run win. It had a great light, crispy texture, and the flavor was awesome. But last but not least, let's give our coconut flour fried chicken a try. Now, the coconut was the least crunchy out of the three. But it was definitely a close second behind the pork rinds for flavor. It had just a subtle sweetness and really didn't taste much like coconut. Which is good because personally I'm not a huge fan of coconut so I was a little worried it would have a super strong flavor. But it really doesn't. So I hope I've inspired some of you low carbers out there to give one of these a try. Or even if you're not eating low carb some of these can be a great alternative to regular boring fried chicken. I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Passion for Food. If you have, give me a thumbs up below and consider subscribing and hitting that little bell so you don't miss our future episodes. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check out the link in the description for the new Passion for Food t-shirt store. I'm going to add some stuff. Just you wait. I hope everyone's doing well out there. This has been Graham with Passion for Food.